Ross Tucker never quit on any of his teams. Some of his teams ask him to quit. The former NFL player, now the host of the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, also the uh, analyst for uh, Westwood One, kind enough to join us. How are you, Ross? Dan, I'm fad- fantastic, <laughs> except I'm on chat row right now uh, at danpatrick.com, and I can't figure out how to change my avatar. I got to get this beautiful <laughs> meat- meathead James Vanderbeek picture on there. So I'm just a... Uh, I'm like the people on Twitter I hate right now. I'm a nameless, faceless guy. You do look like a, a bigger James Vanderbeek. I, I see it. Like um, a thicker, beefier James Vanderbeek. Yeah, I've beefier. always gotten that one and Putty from Seinfeld. Those are the two I've gotten a million <laughs> times. The thing is, is like, I don't think either one of those guys look like each other. I, I don't get the meathead Vanderbeek one. I kind of get the putty one. He's a big guy. Go Devils. Got to support the team. I never really understood the Vanderbeek one, but enough people say it. And uh, yeah. I don't know how we – one day you were out and I was filling in. They call me meathead Vanderbeek and it's stuck <laughs> ever since. Well, Fritzy looks like Paulie from Rocky. Which I hate. <laughs> but he does look like Paulie from Rocky. Hey there, Rocco. You know what? I never heard that before, and Fritzy, I, I kind of see it a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. And I, I can't remember what I can't remember what movie it was, but what is up with you taking all of Rocky's hard-earned money? I mean, he's in there punching people, getting punched, and then you spend and blow all his money, Fritzy. Terrible. I, I it's think not it, right. Was that Rocky Four that you did then? I did in the Soviet Union there. Yeah. I think that was the one. I was pocketing. Um, all right. Your reaction to J.J. Watt going to Arizona is what? What? Uh, uh, initial reaction, Dan, was surprise because it hadn't been one of the teams that had been reported, right? You'd heard a lot about the Bills, the Browns, certainly the Packers. It felt like the Arizona Cardinals kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, you know, look, I'll be honest, Dan, I think he went to the place that offered him the most money. And I've got no problem with that whatsoever. You know, I think a lot of times people say he should have gone here for a ring or should have gone there for a ring. Like, look at, look at the Vegas odds. Okay. It's really hard to win a ring. So would the Packers have a better chance than the Cardinals? Yeah. Would the Buffalo Bills have a better chance than the Cardinals? Probably. But the Packers haven't been in the Super Bowl in 10 years. So, okay. He goes there marginally better chance to go to the Super Bowl or he goes to Buffalo Bill. They haven't been in the Super Bowl in almost 30 years, whatever it is. I think the only thing you know for sure, Dan, is the money that you're going to get from that contract. And I know fans don't want to hear this. And I know all of your listeners want guys to just go where they think they have a best chance to win a ring. Is it likely in Arizona? Probably not. But this is his last big bite at the apple. They gave him the most guaranteed money, it sounds like, by far. I don't blame him one bit. They don't have as good a chance to win the Super Bowl as some of these other teams, but they do have a chance. They're not a terrible team. And he gets the guaranteed money he was looking for. I don't blame him. I think this just comes down to lifestyle for J.J. Watt. And I have no problem with that. I know we want guys to chase the ring until they chase the ring, and then we criticize you for chasing the ring. I think J.J. Watt probably looked at this and said, it's a good team, maybe not a great team. I can be a leader there. And, uh, you know, his wife is from Utah. Maybe this is just comes down to something simple of, you know, the money was important, but lifestyle as well. Uh, if you If you've been to Scottsdale this time of the year, it's a wonderful place to live. And maybe that's all this was. All right, a couple other things here. I mentioned first hour. I have the perfect landing spot for Alex Smith. Washington football team doesn't want him anymore. He's 36 years of age. And do you want to know what my pick is? I have a guess. Okay. I was not listening. I'm going to guess Chicago Bears. Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh, interesting. Reunited with Urban Meyer. At age 36, you're going to be drafting Trevor Lawrence you're able to sort of be that liaison, backup quarterback, offensive coordinator, assistant head coach, whatever it is, and and not a lot of pressure there. Maybe you start out as the starter as Trevor Lawrence gets acclimated there. But I thought Alex Smith on that roster made a whole lot of sense for uh, for uh, Urban Meyer. 
Yeah, it's the first time I've heard that, Dan. Uh, I like it. What, what I really like the most about it is for Trevor Lawrence. I mean, Alex Smith yeah. is an awesome guy, consummate professional. If you listen to Patrick Mahomes talk about Alex Smith and what Alex did for Mahomes that first year, Patrick Mahomes gives Alex Smith a ton of credit. So from Jacksonville's perspective, it absolutely makes sense, especially with Trevor having this torn labrum shoulder surgery. Maybe you don't want him out there week one. Maybe he needs a couple weeks. The thing I don't like about it, Dan, I, I don't think Alex wants to really be a backup. I, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I think Alex wants to play. I mean, he's made a ton of money. I, he may I not he have a choice, though. And play. He may not have a choice, though. Uh, I think you're right. I don't think – I think it'd be tough for any team right now to say Alex Smith is our guy. You know, the one place right now is that maybe Matt Nagy, who worked with him in Kansas City, thinks – yeah. I can win 10 games with Alex. He'll be better than Trubisky or Foles would be. But, you know, that injury he suffered, Dan, is just so tricky. There's a reason why he had calf issues at the end of the season. There's a reason why he couldn't play in the playoff game. I don't think any team is going to hitch their wagon, Alex Smith. I think you're right. And I think Jacksonville probably does end up becoming maybe his best spot. We haven't had you on since the uh, Russell Wilson story blew up. And the fact that his agent publicly says to Adam Schefter, hey, if we want to stay, but if we get traded, here's the four teams here. To me, that felt like that's the, that's the end. That that's You can't be one foot in and one foot out. You can't be sort of pregnant. And it feels like, hey, we want to stay, but what do you think happens with Russell Wilson eventually? Yeah, so two two separate and distinct things here in my mind. Number one... You know, for him to go on with you and say the things that he said, I was really surprised. Uh, I've always been a big Russell Wilson fan, big Russell Wilson supporter. But to say that he's tired of getting hit so much, you know, hey, Russell, you kind of have the ball in your hand. You kind of control that. How about throwing the ball away? How about getting rid of the ball sooner? You know, I will just tell you as a former offensive lineman, I took offense to that, right? Like that was like publicly calling out his offensive line. And to some extent in my mind, publicly calling himself out. What happened to that personal accountability, personal responsibility? You don't see Tom Brady say, I'm sick of getting hit too much or Drew Brees. They get rid of the ball. So that bothered me. And then this whole thing of he doesn't want to go somewhere else, but if he does, these are the team. What does that even mean? He doesn't want to go somewhere else. But if he does, these are the teams. I don't, know, I, mean, I don't know, Dan, if he really wants to leave or if he's figured out that the best way to have everybody talking about you is to leak that you want to go somewhere else and to even start to leak specific. I mean, people in Chicago are going crazy. There's, I saw some guy tweet that Russell Wilson saying he wanted to go to the Bears is the third best quarterback in Bears history. Just Russell Wilson <laughs> saying he wanted to go to the Bears. I mean, that was that like, was. And why would he want to go there? Why, why, like that? Why would you want to go to the Bears? Like that doesn't make sense. That was Paulie who tweeted that, Ross. <laughs> it was. Paulie said it's the third greatest moment for a uh, potential Bears quarterback that Russ just mentioned the Bears on his uh, wish list of four. You just think he wants to be talked about, and that's why they're leaking all of this. There are people that believe that Russell Wilson sort of fancies himself, Dan, as, as like the football Magic Johnson over the next 10, 20 years of his life and wants to have that type of business impact. He is really into investing. He's really into doing deals where he gets equity. And he's got a lot of people that he talks to. It's my understanding. And I think that part of it might be I don't think it's all of it I think there is some frustration that they haven't been able to get back to the Super Bowl but let's just say this I, I think he has realized that his name being in the news is not a negative mm. for all of the other things he wants to accomplish off the field we're talking to uh, Ross Tucker former NFL player and a host of the Ross Tucker football podcast also uh, Ross's birthday today happy birthday Ross thank you I am twice 
the legal drinking limit. So I will have some daddy sodas tonight. I will say this, Dan, I, I don't like birthdays anymore. I, I I'm, I'm at the age where I no longer like, I'm like 42 that I, I don't like birthdays. My, my wife thinks I'm weird. It's like, well, it's better than the alternative, but I don't, I'm not loving birthdays anymore. I think up, up until like 35, I still liked my birthday. Now I'm like, no, nah, we don't need to talk about it. And maybe that means I'm a weirdo now. I don't know. I'm not loving it. Do you, did you get, well, no, you weren't playing in February or March. So you wouldn't get gifts from your teammates when, when you played, right? No, but, um, you know, we obviously got gifts at around Christmas time. There were some guys that were better than others, Dan. Uh, look, Drew Bledsoe, the one year he got us two plane tickets anywhere you wanted to go. So that's where my wife and I went on our honeymoon to Hawaii, thanks to Bledsoe's plane tickets. The next year he gave us a Motorola Droid Razor when that was like the coolest phone. And he paid the bill unlimited minutes for like three years <laughs> until his mom called me and was like, hi, Ross, this is Barbara Bledsoe. Um, Drew's mom, the gift is over now. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Dan, there was Emmett Smith, who my second year, I started the last seven games for Emmett. He gave us a uh, signed Emmett Smith uh, all-time leading rusher book, signed Emmett Smith jersey, <laughs> and a signed bottle of Emmett Smith all-time leading rusher wine, a wine bottle that he signed. It was amazing. <laughs> So you were probably mad when Brady took over for Drew Bledsoe because that meant you were not getting any great gifts. Well, so I, the funny thing is you really only get the gift if you're a starter. So I only got the gift three years. My second year, my third year, and my fourth year. My rookie year, I, I didn't get one of the gifts okay. from Tony Banks or whoever it was in Washington. <laughs> when I was in New England, I didn't get a gift from anybody. Um, so yeah, you really only get the gift if you're a starter, but it is pretty sweet. I've seen some of the gifts these guys get now. They're unbelievable. They get like four wheelers and stuff. That would have been amazing. How many, how many plays did you play with Brady? Zero. <laughs> I started in, 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 no, in all sincerity, I only played. So the Patriots picked me up midway through the Oh five year. I only played the fourth quarter of the dolphins game. Week 17, when uh, Matt Castle came in and Doug Flutie did the drop kick. And I played on special teams against the Broncos. You know, that's one of my claim to fame, Dan. I only ever played in one playoff game. And it was the first playoff game that Brady ever lost. <laughs> Bra Brady was like 10-0 and in the playoffs until I got in. <laughs> and then... Uh, did Brady then, know your name, Ross? Six, they, what's say it again? Did Brady know your name? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah, because I think he he comes anytime you get signed. The first thing he does is come up to you and he's like, shakes your hand. Hi, Ross. I'm Tom. Nice to meet you. Like, hi, Tom. I know who you are. <laughs> and then uh, he, well, I was the center a lot in practice, so he would come in the huddle and be like, "All right, Ross, you and me, great snap first. Like he takes it real, real <laughs> seriously. So he definitely, uh, he definitely knew who I was. And then oh six. I got traded to Cleveland. So I never actually was in a regular season game with Tom Brady. Give me that impersonation of Brady again in the huddle. So before he calls the play, he looks at me. And Dan, this is like spring OTAs. He's already <laughs> won three Super Bowls. It's like, all right, Ross, you and me. Great snap first. Great snap first. And then I'm like 26, 27. I've started 25 games. And I look at him, I'm like, all right, man, all right. But in my head, I'm like, okay, Tom, okay, Tom, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, dude, this is, this, this is, I, I got to say this, Dan. He lives his life differently than anybody else. So I played 18 years of football. I was a lineman most of the time. The quarterback center exchange is so mundane. It's so like you take a ball, you hit your butt crack with it. The quarterback's top hand is there. Boom. Quarterback's like, oh, whatever. I never played with a quarterback that cared nearly as much about that snap as Brady. And this is practice, but like in his psychopath head, <laughs> he wanted that, like that smack when you hit the top hand, because that meant it was a perfect snap. He could look at the defense a little sooner. So like, think about anything in life. Okay. And you just, you're just doing something to do it. 
Brady doesn't look at anything like that. Brady looks at every single thing in his life as a chance to get just a little bit better at it and try to perfect. I mean, that's why he is who he is. You're the best. Hey, happy birthday, Ron. So I hope you don't get any gifts today. <laughs> you don't need Thank them. you, Dan. See you guys. Yep. I'll be back on chat row right now. Shout out chat row and back row. All right. That's uh, Ross Tucker, former NFL player and uh, host of the Ross Tucker football podcast. Nice. And, uh, an analyst for Westwood One. <laughs>